Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a grumpy girl, of course, right as I sit down to film this. It is seven o'clock on the dot at night. I have three older kids sleeping. Well, one, one is sleeping out of the three. Hopefully this keeps her entertained for a while. Usually she hasn't been grumpy like this. I usually have to keep her up for a good hour and a half before bedtime. She's yawning. She's not hungry. I just fed her not too long ago. Um, so I don't really know what's going on. But now she's just staring at the camera. <laughs> Hopefully the camera stays like focused on me because I need to be swaying or moving just a little bit so she stays calm. Got a little Liammy. I wanted to give you guys a little update. She turned two months old on the second of this month and the time is flying by. It is no joke. They say um, the more kids you have, the faster time flies. That is so true. If you are new to my channel, this is our fourth and final baby. We have two boys. Lane is six years old. Grady is five years old. Emery, our daughter, is two years old. And now Ren here is two months old. So nine weeks old yesterday nine weeks it's just crazy wild and i wanted to give you guys an update because i haven't been on here a whole lot to talk about her since she was born or i think a week old was the last time i really updated just specifically about her she just had her two month checkup the other day um last thursday she was 11 pounds 0.4 ounces and 22 and a half inches long so she was born at what she was born at seven pounds, five ounces, and now she's 11, and she was born at 20 inches long. So two and a half inches longer in the last two months. Um, she's just growing like a weed, which I was so excited to see how much she weighed, of course, but I was more interested in how long she was gonna be just because I thought she's just growing so much. I knew just by looking at her, she was getting longer, and I was so curious to see what it was. So two and a half inches longer, since she was born is wild to me. You guys are not gonna believe. So all four of my kids have been great sleepers, um, but this girl is sleeping through the night and has been for the last, I don't know, week and a half probably. Anywhere from six and a half hours all the way up to 10 hours, a little bit over 10 hours at night. And I don't know, you guys, I think I'm just lucky. I really can't tell you <laughs> any like, tips or tricks. The only thing we really do is I have found to keep her up a good like hour and a half before I nurse her for that last time at bedtime. And then I swaddle her in the Swaddle Me brand, like the Velcro swaddles. Put her arms down, swaddle her nice and tight. I nurse her that last session. Like I said, after I kept her up for a good hour, hour and a half when I know she's getting really tired. And then I have the sound machine blaring high. I have her little nightlight right there. And she has an afghan, an afghan blanket that I lay nicely on top of her, just as like a weighted blanket almost. It's not near her face, nothing like that. She can't, her hands are down under the swaddle, so she can't um, get the blanket up over her head. What? I think just as like a, a weight on her is comforting. I don't know if that's a little little trick there. I don't know, but she's sleeping through the night and I'm so grateful. She is just not happy tonight, you guys. <laughs> this is not a good time to be doing this. Uh, but we started, so now we're gonna finish this video. Daytime, on the other hand, she is not sleeping in big like chunks anymore, I wouldn't say. And I wouldn't necessarily call it like cluster feeding, but she is wanting to nurse every like pretty much clockwork hour and 15 minutes to like hour and 45 minutes she is wanting to nurse again usually i like to keep it at that three hour mark and nurse her um but i don't know what's going on she might be going through a growth spurt it's kind of what i'm thinking i know people that have the what is it that app it's like that growth app you can buy on your phone for the sake of this video i just put her on the boob so we can just have some peace and quiet here for a second it is an hour and 33 minutes since she nursed last. So 
I think she's going through a leap, but as I was saying, there is some app you can buy on your phone um, that tells you like when they're going through a leap and like more fussy or I don't really know. I've never bought it. I've never really looked at it. Just kind of take it how it comes and we roll with the punches around here. So I'm thinking that's what's going on. She is becoming a lot more alert during the day and just like longer wake windows. She's not sleeping all the time from when she wakes up to nurse and then goes right back down after feeding. She, you can probably hear her suckling, um, but she is such a great nurser. We had her tongue tie revised at a week and two days, I believe. I talked to you guys a little bit about that on here before, or if you guys follow my Instagram account, I have it linked below in the description box. I have a highlight on there of baby and just postpartum in general, but I keep up to date on my stories over there and have talked a lot about her tongue tie revision. I was nervous to do it at first because my other three kids never had an issue with nursing, never had to have their tongue tie clipped and all that. So I was really wishy-washy on if I wanted to have it done with Ren or not, but I am so grateful we did because it was night and day difference. Within like a day and a half, she was nursing better. It just proved at her two month appointment that she's gaining weight, luckily, because at her one week checkup, she was not gaining any weight at all. And we could just tell that her tongue tie was really a problem because my nipples were sore. She was spilling milk out of the side of her mouth when she was nursing. It was just not a, not a good time at all for either of us. And the whole reason I was so wishy-washy about it was because I heard different reviews from people on if the tongue tie revision even worked for them because sometimes it could be just a latching issue or whatnot. But luckily for us, it worked. We just went ahead with it. I told myself and I talked to my husband about it. If we didn't try getting her tongue tie revised, we wouldn't know if that was the problem or not. It was just more so to like rule it out if it worked or not and praise the Lord it did, so very very happy with that outcome and yeah so eating like a champ sleeping like a champ I really don't have anything like not negative to say but like anything we're working through right now or I don't know it was just that obstacle we had to overcome with the tongue tie pretty much right off the bat and now everything is a lot smoother her sleep like I said, I don't know. She's just doing really, really good. And she fits in with our crazy family as good as she can. She doesn't really get startled at nap time with the older three kids because you can bet a six, five, and a two-year-old, it is crazy around here. My husband works out of town, so I am solo parenting six days out of the week. And four kids can get pretty crazy. You can tell she's getting a little chunkier now. She's getting her rolls and, um, I think it's so funny to me, every time I give her a bath, her hair gets all fuzzy, you know, and a little mohawk, and I swear I can see a little hint of red. If you've seen my videos before, um, you know, our third baby, our girl, she has like pretty auburn red hair, and so everybody was asking if we thought that baby girl here was gonna have red hair, and she was born with brown hair, but I don't know, for some reason, I just feel like I see a hint of red. My cousins have red hair, and then Justin was born with red hair, and he turned like a dishwater blonde and just now has the red beard. Um, so it runs on both sides of our family. I'm pretty sure she's gonna be brown hair, which makes it so fun because our oldest, he is like strawberry blonde. Our um, second boy is bright blonde. He is very blonde, especially in the summer. And then Emery is auburn red and now Ren looks brown to me so it would be so funny to have like one of each color our boys have blue eyes emery has brown eyes like her daddy and Ren, as of now has blue eyes but looking back at pictures emery's eyes didn't turn for like five or six months so i have no idea if they're gonna be blue or brown we'll have to wait and see but that's pretty much all i can think about on her she's growing good everything so a little bit about me two months postpartum this was my fourth c-section i've talked a lot about it on here that i've had c-sections with every single one of my babies it all started out because elaine our oldest was breech and just the way he was positioned they could not turn him in my belly and we ended up having a almost emergency c-section they tried doing the flip at 37 weeks i went or no 
They tried doing the flip at 36 weeks pregnant. Um, I went in for an ultrasound at 37 weeks to check fluid because they warned me that you could lose fluid after like such an invasive procedure like that. I lost over half my fluid, so they told me to go home. I had two hours to get all my bags, Justin and myself to the hospital, and we had the C-section. So technically not emergency, like I wasn't put under nothing, but I had to be there in two hours or less to have the C-section. And ever since then, we just had repeat C-sections. Let me tell you, recovery, I, I feel like recovery every time is hard, but fourth time around, oh my gosh. I knew what to expect, of course, because I've had them before, but I don't know if it was just because this is my last C-section. Um, I've had it many times before or that they did end up taking out my tubes this time around. So it was probably an extra 30 minutes in the OR getting my tubes out. It just made more sense for me to get my tubes out while I'm open on the OR table than to be stitched up after my C-section and have Justin go in to get snipped. So just made a whole lot more sense doing it that way. And we knew Ren was our last baby anyways. We have our two boys, two girls, perfect family. Recovery this time around felt a lot longer like it was just dragging on I'm kind of guessing it was because of the tubal and the way they stitch me up um, if you've had a c-section or know of somebody with a c-section you kind of know where the incision is and the sides of my incision they described it as they used them as like an anchor to sew up the rest of my incision the sides of my incision were very tight um, because they used them as an anchor they said and it was just extra painful there and took a lot longer to not feel that pain. Now, nine weeks postpartum, I'm not feeling that pain at all. I did just start working out this week and um, like actual workout routine. I've been um, working out in the morning. It just it feels so good to get back at a routine like that. And now that she's sleeping through the night, I'm able to do that. And feel a little bit alive <laughs> for the past probably month I've been making myself go on at least a 20 minute walk I had postpartum depression and anxiety with our second and our third so I felt like starting a little bit of I don't know a little bit of a routine eating a little better drinking you know drinking plenty of water at least taking 20 minutes out of my day to go on a walk would be just something for me um, to wind down my day. I've been doing it either at nap time or at the end of the day when all the kids are in bed. And it's just nice to take a deep breath, take that time for myself. That's what I've been doing for the past month or longer now. Um, but yeah, as of three days ago, I started a workout routine in the morning. When I get up, we switch to the other side over here. So we might be staying up all night because she's not having her like wake window right now. She's just wanting to nurse and I'm trying to get this video done, so we're just gonna go with the flow. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. I told you guys about my walk, how I started working out again, and it's just important for me to take that time for myself and prioritize me again with four kids. It's really hard and just juggling everything. I'm just trying to get ahead of it if I can at all. Um, I know those are things you can't control, but if there's one thing I can control, it is putting myself first and just taking that time every day for myself. I'm not so much trying to push myself on losing weight right now. I did lose 15 pounds just after birth, you know, water weight, retention, all that stuff. It just came off, but I am not one to lose weight breastfeeding. They always told me before I had kids that, oh, you'll lose all the weight you put on while carrying your baby because breastfeeding, it just like sheds off you. No, I swear you guys, I hold on to weight or maybe even gain weight while I'm nursing. I don't know if it's all the snacks that I crave or what, but that's just how my body is. And I've always been like that with all babies. And this time I'm just more aware um, of what foods I'm eating. Yes, I still cave into like all the junk food that I want, but I am like aware of it, if that makes sense. And I'm just trying not to focus on the number. I would 
like my whole goal would be to lose at least 30 more pounds 30 35 that would be my goal weight but as of right now i'm just not going to focus on the weight i'm trying not to dwell on it we're eating about 80 20 of my nutrition right now i am meal prepping every week and i just find that that helps me so much with being intentional and getting the right nutrients in my body and not just for my goal of like shedding slowly the weight but just for her and nursing drinking about 128 ounces a day which you're supposed to drink um, half of your body weight and that is a little over and some days are better than others today mm, i think i still have another 40 ounces to go and it's almost eight o'clock at night we're making do you guys we're trying our best and at least i'm eating because i find that if i don't meal prep i just grab horrible things or i forget a meal and that's way worse for like my milk supply than anything so i updated you guys on ren on myself postpartum and i think the only thing else i can think of is how she has kind of fallen into place in our family being the fourth baby um the kids are obsessed with her emery thinks she's her little doll and the boys are old enough now they're six and five they just adore her they are so helpful i can ask them really for anything and they are great to not complain well sometimes complain they're kids but um just to help out they love their sisters and just being so good with a baby i cannot believe i just love all of them so much and uh, it's just like she was meant to be here she has fit perfect in our family and you guys that's really all i can think of i really wish i would have wrote some notes down but i think i hit every aspect of what i wanted to talk about in this video i wish she was awake a little bit more for you guys but you will see her a lot more in upcoming videos and I really hope she sleeps tonight this is not planned but very spontaneous video she is just like mom i just want all the milk and all the snuggles right now i'm starting to see she's losing a little hair right here which all of my kids did that i feel like as their head grew and they got older they lost hair because they were all born with hair but they get this mark right here from swiveling their head on the floor and oh Look at that burpy girl. So burpy. She's got a little mohawk going on. I gave her a bath tonight. So it's extra floofy. Alright you guys, I think I'm going to end this video trying to get her to bed and hopefully she sleeps tonight. So thank you guys so much for watching and keeping updated with our family and sweet baby Ren here. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that. Click the little like button on this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys. Bye.